Hey folks, Eric the Old Jarhead here. So after bouncing the mill around a whole bunch uh, with some big logs, I went ahead and had to spend a little time going back over the outriggers and tighten them back up. Some of you had mentioned in the comments, you noticed that the mill was bouncing around a lot. And on those big logs, that can happen. One of the things that uh, you have to kind of think about on these remote jobs is that when you set the mill on dirt, kind of think of it as a big steel foot you know one of those things you use to pound the sand down when you're putting some bricks on a sidewalk or something you know if you think about it the mill outriggers are just steel feet when you have that you know maybe six inch square chunk of steel sitting on the ground and you load these big logs on them and they bounce around a whole bunch you know it's just like pile driving those outriggers into the ground and so you gotta you gotta reset them from time to time just kind of shim them up a little bit make sure they got good contact with the ground good pressure so that you'll keep that main beam on the mill nice and solid once I got those set, then uh, it was time to get into the next log. But one of the things you got to do is just make sure all the branches are cut as close to the bark as you can. Otherwise, when the log gets up on the deck, if you've got one of those branches that's kind of cut, you know, an inch or two sticking out from the bark, and you can raise your tow boards and, and kind of level them out a little bit and hold them up. But it's just better if you just take a chainsaw and, and kind of whittle them down a little bit and, and, and make everything as smooth as you can. you can see on on this log it was tapered quite a bit it was a 20 footer and it had quite a bit of taper so we just used the near end toe board to raise it up a little bit so that we can get the pith even on each end of the log you know i just go down and measure it and if it's you know 12 inches off the deck on one end and 13 on the other or 14 on the other you just kind of lift the the small end up a little bit to get them so that they're both about the same that'll help keep the pith centered and make it a lot easier to box in that heart In order to make this log into two by fours, I need to make a cant that's six and a quarter inches high. That gives me that eighth of an inch curve for my first two by fours and another eighth for my second and third set of two by fours, right? Because you're going to split it. One of the things you'll see me doing here is uh, when I'm milling this into a cant and getting ready to split it, I'm going to kind of keep it as, as big as I can because there was so much weighing on the small end of this tapered log. So I'll go ahead and I'll make it kind of big for what I really want so that I can get it to a point where after splitting it, I can kind of work on getting rid of some of the weighing some of that bark on that small end. And so I can just take a little skim cut here and there and just kind of whittle it down a little bit. And you'll see some of those skim cuts, you know, they just kind of fall off. Once you get it pretty close, then, you know, I split that cant down so that I can get two four inch cants out of it that are six and a quarter high. Once I've got two four inch cants, you know, you just kind of roll them up and just use your log roller to roll them around a little bit and get them in, into position. And then since I did make this a bit big, now I just need to go ahead and now skim it down a little bit.
tried to get the side with the most bark on it to be in the upright position and then I can skim it again and get it down to that six and a quarter inches that I need in order to make three sets of two by four. So we'll just take a skim cut off and then drop her down. Now we're on the simple set, two and an eighth of an inch. We drop her down, take a cut out and that'll give me two two by fours. I got that set just right. I also want to keep an eye on the heart just to make sure that I'm boxing it in. It's really important actually to box the, the heart in. The pith isn't even wood really and it's the weakest part of the log. At the very center, the heart of the log, is really the weakest part and so it makes the, the weakest lumber and it's really important to box that in with good wood all the way around the heart. And then we drop her down and make that last cut. And we get six two by fours out of this full dimension. That's really all there is to it. Pretty simple, pretty quick to get this one done. Love those close-up shots of the band coming out of the wood. <laughs> Sawdust flying everywhere. That's great. And there you have it, folks. Six full dimension 2x4s out of a small dug fur. There's some wane on some of those near the end, but that's okay. They can be cut down. You still get some usable wood out of that. Anyway, folks, as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. The old jarhead out.